Okay, so, hi, hello. Welcome back to another creepypasta video, but today I'm doing something kind of different. I'm doing ASMR. Um, this is my first time doing anything kind of like this, so if I mess up, I'm sorry. But yeah, I'll start that. Let's get into it. So, creepypasta I'm going to be reading you today is called Campfire. So, let's get into it. So, Campfire. Summer camp was a memorable part of my childhood. The most memorable was that summer of 72. It was my last summer as a kid. I have just turned 15. I was looking forward to starting high school in the fall with the older teenagers. Camp Tanakawa was located in the thick forest of East Texas, about 43 miles away from my home. There was nothing really exceptionally exceptional about the camp. It had a standard anemones, a lake, lots of woods to explore, an archery and rifle range, and a nature preserve. What were exceptional were the three leading counselors. Mr. Rivera was a would-be jock and was in charge of organizing sports and running the archery and rifle ranges. Mr. Holloway led arts and crafts and taught campfire, camp, that taught camping and outdoorsmanship. But the counselor I remember most was Mr. Blackburn. He was kind of a brainiac and maintained a nature preserve. He also told us about the flora and fauna around the camp. Was, was, but was particularly interested in bugs. He had been a doctoral candidate several years before and studied insects in the Amazon basin. No one knew why he didn't finish a doctorate. He was certainly bright enough. It wasn't hard to, it wasn't hard to imagine Mr. Blackburn in a khaki outfit and chasing insects with a butterfly net through the rainforest. He was a bespectacled man of about 30 35 with tasseled dark hair and a hint of a beard that grew steadily longer as the reek progressed. He was far from fastidious and dressed. In fact, in our circumstances, you might call him a swab. His denim jeans had seen better days and were often besmeared with mud, while his shirts bore scars of battles with briars and brambles in the wild. It was the end of August and the, cam and the end of camp. Tradition dictated that the rendezvous of very camping campfires in the evening of the last day. Each campfire was supervised by one of the counselors, and it so happened that Mr. Blackburn attended ours. I was in a group of about 10 or 11 boys sequestered in a small clearing of the lakeshore. We roasted marshmallows and made hot dogs and s'mores, and twilight passed into the night. In the bright fire's glow, we passed the evening with talk of the past and dreams of the future. The campfire crackled, and I cast a protective, protective circle of light. Above us, an endless number of stars stretched across the heavens and around us. An endless void of dreary night. We huddled close to the light, for although none would admit it, the surrounding close to the light, oh, for none that would admit it, the surrounding darkness held terrors we could only imagine. And I pretend to show up bravery, so I suggested telling ghost stories as night grew darker. Of course, there were the standard tells boys always tell. The bloody hook, tap, 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 and a gaggle of urban legends we relayed in turn. Soon, Mr. Blackburn became a storyteller. Well, boys, I'll tell you a true story of what happened to me in the Amazon. I've been traveling with Carlito, my guide, for three days west of Manas on the Amazon River. I heard rumors of a rare bird flight with a habitat along the banks of the lower Amazon, and I was anxious to find, a, to find and catalog one. I'll tell you boys, the Amazon is a femme fatale. At once beautiful and dangerous, and the heat, oh the heat is stifling. It's a place of contrast, and there are ageless trees that rise on every side and dominate the land. There are magnificent waterfalls and birds and animals found nowhere else in the world. The jungle is often breathtaking, like some magnific magnificent painting, elegantly and lovingly created with the exquisite strokes of the world canvas. But within the beauty, there is also danger. There are things in the jungle no tale of horror could hope to describe. There are man-eating cats that prowl at night, and piranha that, devour that devours a man during the day. There are spiders as big as your head, and monstrous snakes that are stuffed in nightmares. But a thing even the natives dread. The creature that kills without pity or remorse is the black caiman. What's that? One of the boys hesitated, abruptly, hesitantly, hesitantly erupted. 
interrupted. A creature from the blackest abyss of hell, son, Mr. Blackburn continued. It's the devil's blend of alligator and crocodile that prowls the river and kills the unsuspecting. Its black head is invisible underwater, but its dark lifeless eyes watch you, waiting, flying nearer and nearer. Then with a lightning flash of his jaws, his teeth rips you open, and you hear your own terrible screams as this creature swallows you whole. The sudden cry of an owl caused an involuntary scream from us all. Our eyes strain against the darkness and imagine a creature lurking silently in a lake just above, just beyond. Mr. Blackburn paused for a moment to let us reflect on his description. We all became a little more aware of the night. We stopped at one of the local villages to trade for food and water and heard the stories of a monstrous black caiman the natives call Rio Morte. It means river death. Few have seen the creature and lived. You know, boys, he added, the river people say the jungle keeps it on. They believe when the jungle takes a life, it leaves Hanatu. That means the ghost who walks. They are spirits who have neither a grave, neither grave for rest, nor for the fulfillment of earthly purpose. And so they wanted the earth for all time. They are drawn to the living, for they feel the energy of life that has been denied to them. They long for the warmth of another human being put, being of, no. they long for the warmth of another human being, but feel the cold of premature destruction. The river people respect Hanatu. They fear only Rio Morte. Loaded with supplies and information, we set out again on our journey down the Amazon. Carlito and I fruitlessly searched the river banks for the elusive butterflies. They continued down river. It was late afternoon and its unhealthy disappeared behind the forest canopy. Dark shadows fell across the river as daylight surrendered with the enroaching night. As we slowly paddled our inflatable launch, we had the vague, uneasy feeling of being watched. The dark Amazon waters m meandered through the jungle and we became acutely aware of the sounds of approaching night. Suddenly, behind us, there was a splash. We both looked, but only saw turbulent water near the river bank. The Kaluto saw one thing in the dim afternoon twilight. That huge, dark head, and black eyes protruding from the river. Rio Morte, Kaluto cried. Rio Morte. I drew my pistol and fired at the beast, but the bullet glanced off his thick hide and the creature disappeared beneath the water. We searched for the inky river in vain when suddenly a vicious blow struck our boat from beneath and Carlito was thrown overboard. He frantically struggled to climb into the boat and I grabbed his arm and began to pull. With a sudden thrash of water, Carlito was pulled from my grasp. The beast rolled over and over in the water. I heard Carlito scream in terror and agony as the river turned crimson and the creature disappeared once more. I paddled fifth feverishly towards the river bank, but I could see that black head fall fast and faster. With a great splash of water, those huge jaws suddenly ripped into the boat. I was thrown into that murky water and began to swim harder than I ever did before. My heart pounded as I panicked as I crawled into when I clawed at the prescriptuous river bank. The black monster from hell swam closer and closer. I suddenly felt a crushing pain on my ankle. I was struggling, helpless as I was pulled under the river and breathed this water into my lung. The, the, storyteller, the storyteller paused, then said, Maybe this is too scary. Let's finish the story later. There was a cry of protest from the boys. No, tell us now. What happened next? Well, our narrator continued. Then he hate me. Then he ate me. Of course. Mr. Blackburn smiled and faded away into the dying campfire glow. Okay. Okay. So, um, that's it for the story. Sorry for the story being kind of, kind of lame at the end, but I had fun reading it. Also, sorry if I, you hear me mess up. This is all one take. <laughs> you know? But yeah, 
if you enjoy the ASMR type thing. Um, I still don't know how to do this stuff, but I thought it'd be fun to change it up for a little bit. So um, yeah, you'll see some stuff pop on the screen now. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It helps out the channel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye for one.